Marketer of the day, number 406. Facebook groups, Facebook live streams, and word of mouth advertising for real estate brokers with Whitney Nicely. Welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. Whether today's topic is self-help, membership sites, search engine optimization, real estate, e-commerce, or something brand new, this is the place to be. Please help me welcome to the show your host, Robert Plank. Hey everyone, and thanks for listening. We're talking right now with Whitley, Whitney Nicely, and Whitney went from no investments and no strategies to 19 houses, 19 apartment units, and seven chunks of land in less than three years, all bringing monthly money to her bank account on autopilot. So we're gonna hear a lot about Whitney's story, what she's been up to. So how are things, Whitney? Better than ever, can't complain, and all that fun stuff. And so, everything's uh, so going I great. You do real estate. Can you tell us you? what that's all about? <laughs> I really focus in lease options. So, I find sellers that have houses that they don't want, that they don't want to list, they don't really care anything about and selling. So how does that work and out? It's just like they let they just me want buy it from them on the payment deal terms. And they don't want to bother, so they're fine taking like a little bit of a discount. Is that right? Well, they're not even really taking a discount sometimes. I find people, I'm basically a glorified tenant. And I find people that are tired of having monthly money going out and no monthly money coming in, or they're tired of toilets and tenants breaking down on them. So I come in as a professional tenant and take all those troubles away from them. And at the same time, I'm actually buying their house. So if they owe $100,000 on it, I'll give them $100,000. I don't try to, you know, steal it or, you know, take it away from them or anything like that. And I don't give them bottom dollar offers. I give them cool. that sounds you know, like a really great deal for both parties. And so, give how do them you, and turn around and make some money. How do you find the, these people? How do you find these uh, these property owners who are in need of your help and your assistance? I have a lot of word of mouth. I don't want to say tricks, but I do like to keep everybody in the neighborhood kind of talking about me. That way, I'm in the top of their mind. They know they don't have to pay me a commission. They know that it's really quick and easy to work with me. And a lot of people, you know, when we talk about real estate, it just seems like such a big, cumbersome thing. And a lot of people just want it to be as easy and as seamless and as stress-free as possible. And the easiest way well, to cool. do so that you said is that just you sell it get to me and let me take you all the stress and headaches so away from How do you do that exactly? Mm-hmm. Seconds ago, yep. I am really mouthy on Facebook. I see that you joined my Facebook group, and <laughs> I, I'm mouthy in there. I do a lot of Facebook Lives on my personal page. I share a lot of tidbits on my public page. So I like to always be in front of people. I also, when I put out bandit signs, you know, those signs on the side of the road, mine are hot pink. And they say Whitney buys houses and people see them and they talk about them. And, you know, I'll take pictures and post it up. And then my friends will take pictures of my signs and post it up. And that just keeps me in front of everybody and keeps them all kind of curious about Super what great. I do so and how I buy these group, houses. You do Facebook and lives, who you post I can on your help public and page, and you it. have these hot pink signs. And so, is there a reason why? Why everyone else, it seems like, just kind of has that bland advertising? Is it, is it like a, a fear of, of taking some risks or is it lack of creativity? Like, why is it that, that everyone else who's, who's maybe doing some real estate stuff is just sort of kind of bland and like everyone else? Well, there's two, I think there's three kinds of people in real estate investing, especially. We've got a lot of wholesalers out there and they've got yellow signs or white signs and they say, I buy houses. I buy houses cash. Got cash, close quickly. And is that kind of advertising in your face that always reminds me of wholesalers. And I, I'm not a wholesaler. I don't like wholesaling. I'm a broker, actually. And when we talk about the regular real estate side of, you know, local and they're going to help and all this stuff. Oh, dear. And 
then we talk about investors and investors kind of fly under the radar between wholesalers and agents. And that's where I really see myself. I, I have a license, yeah, but I don't ever use it. And I'm not a wholesaler, so I'm not going to give you a bottom dollar price. So I just kind of get out there and do my own little thing and it works. And that's what I teach my students how to do, how to how to stand out from the agents and the wholesalers and really how to stand out from the good old boys club that's been investing in your area for 100 years and they got really deep pockets. You know, my my pink signs make me stand out from those guys. Right. That's super interesting how it seems like when you think about it, they all kind of have the same same color scheme and things like that. And so so you are the person that stands out. And so when you, you have your Facebook group and your Facebook live, I mean, what sort of uh, sort of stuff do you post? Like, do you say, you know, you're going to do you commit ahead of time to uh, Facebook living like every day or every other day? Or do you have topics planned or is it just when the mood strikes you or what's your strategy as far as this Facebook live stuff? I try to be in one of my groups or on my personal page at least once a day. And I really try to get to all three of them every day. And sometimes there's going to be a topic. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, you know, whatever's going on in real estate or in the news or however I can relate that back to real estate. Um, or a lot of times, you know, I'll start kind of like a little carousel. And on my personal page, I'll tell a little story. And then in the group, I'll tell a little bit more of the story. And then in my student group, my, my first tier student group, I'll tell the how of the story. And then in my, you know, high end private group, I'll tell them how they can go and do it and make money from it. So I'll take the same story and keep adding on to it, adding on to it and getting kind of like an onion, getting deeper and deeper and deeper into the good stuff. And that's pretty cool because because you can whet people's appetite from the, yeah. the free stuff. And as you're getting more and more high ticket, you're sharing more stuff. And so so it, it gets uh, it gets more and more detailed and more into the how to. But I imagine that if someone only sees the your stream on one of these places will it still make sense just yes. seeing a piece of it it will and it, it's amazing because you know you see a little five or ten minute thing or you know sometimes i talk for 30 minutes i get carried away and it's like wow that was really awesome and then i'm on live again in another group and you're like oh man that was even better and then you know my students my high-end one-on-one students are like okay it totally makes sense i only watch the videos that you put into this group because everything else just builds to it and then i get down to the nitty-gritty right here that's super cool. And they then, love uh, it. Yeah. So, so you go for, so you, so you live stream and, and you talk a bunch and sometimes you end up uh, talking for 30 minutes. And so uh, have you given any thought to like what the, the structure is? Like, do you kind of plan in your head? Like you're going to, uh, if like there's some kind of news item, do you plan on like breaking it down into pieces or do you kind of just talk until it feels right? Or do you leave room for a call to action at the end? Like what's the sort of structure like? The best structure that I've found is just storytelling. So I went out and I found a seller and this is what was going on with them. Or I went out and I was doing this and this seller came to me and then I went and looked at their house. I, I try to stay away from the news. I don't watch much TV anyway. I get my news from Facebook, but I, I like to tell real life stories. And I'm also not one of those people. I know you see them. They're driving a Lamborghini or a Maserati or something and they've got a million dollar, you know, closing check and, to me, like I, I've never had a check like that. And I've been doing real estate for, I feel like forever now, but I haven't done those deals. And I feel like those deals are so far stretched from where my people and my students are. I like to tell real, you know, in the trenches, in the seller's kitchen stories of what actually happened. And what I found is, you know, there's, there's lots of different sellers but there's always just two or three different reasons why they choose me instead of something else. And when I can focus on that and really narrow in on my ideal seller and then translate it to my students' ideal seller so that they can go out and start talking to these people and realize that they're having the same conversation that I told about in that story, it, it really helps keep it all on a, I don't want to say regular level or a normal level, but like in a real life level instead of talking about Bugattis and million dollar, you know, seven figure checks on one deal. Cause you're the lo odds of that happening on your first 10 or 15 deals. So small anyway, but it, you have to do those first 10 or 15 to make it to those big ones. So I really, I tell stories, real life stories. I tell embarrassing stories on myself. Um, I'm, I'm an open book. I'll, I'll talk about anything and everything. 
Well, cool. And, and your thought process there makes a lot of sense. Just that, you know, you'd want to see something that maybe is, is, uh, is further along than where, where I'm at. If I'm just like a newbie and I'm watching, yeah. I want to see like some great deal, but if it's too crazy, it's like, well, that doesn't really help me. And something more, more relatable, more like doable, see, uh, makes a lot more sense there. And so, uh, so you do this, this, uh, this like Facebook live streaming and you kind of do the, the carousel and you start one place and end another and, and talk about just, things that you have gone through that way people can relate to a certain problem that you were trying to solve and all that cool stuff. And so do you do any, do you do any actions that grow the group? I mean, is it just like your, your Facebook live stream or do you, do you send any outside traffic or run any ads or anything like that? I'm not running ads. I'm really mad at Facebook ads. I cannot crack the code there. I, real estate investing is so much easier than cracking the Facebook ads code. <laughs> like I just can't do it. I don't know where it, what it is in my brain, but I can't get it to go for me. So in the group, we do challenges every month. I do lead generating challenges, free stuff that you can do to get in front of sellers, to find deals, and to get active in your market because – in real estate investing, people have this idea that it's really, really complicated and there's no deals and it's a really hot seller's market and blah, blah, blah. And the truth of the matter is there's more deals out there than any of us could ever get our hands on. And it, it really is a people business. So if three of us go into a seller's kitchen, it's not always going to be who's going to have the best money offer. It's going to be who does that seller like better? So there's, there's plenty of opportunities for everybody out there and people look on the MLS and they can't find any quote good deals. Well, I teach you how to get off the MLS and actually go find the really good deals because the good ones aren't on the MLS anyway. So I do, I do that to encourage people to join the group, monthly group coaching, I mean monthly group uh, lead challenge. And then on Wednesdays, I have just kind of like an ask me anything Ask Wit Wednesday to talk all about investing, you know, really deep questions and newbie questions alike. So I do that. Uh, we've started doing some theme days because I've got a lot of agents. I've got a lot of investors. I got a lot of people who are in the group that have stuff to sell houses or they've got contracts to sell or they got something going on. And so I try to be a place that they can, you know, mix and mingle. And, you know, swap some deals, make some money. I, I don't care. I know there's plenty of deals out there. And somebody might have a deal in my area. And I, I don't want them to hide that. <laughs> right. And then, and so to make sure that everyone can join the group and play I, along here, uh, WhitneyNicely.com slash group. Is that the place for anyone listening to join that Facebook group? Yes. Yes. And I tend to change the name. So it's a lot easier if you just go to WhitneyNicely.com slash group. <laughs> Okay, and is there any reason for that, for changing the name? Is it like just a matter of like can't decide on one or trying to pick up new keywords or what's the reasoning behind that? It's a lot of indecision on my part. I started off just doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and then I branched into group coaching so that more people could get involved in it. And so I've got the Real Estate Investing Rockstars, REI Rockstars, as like my high-end thing. And then I've got a self-study program, First Deal Done Fast. And then the free group, I'm just really struggling with an identity of how to merge those two groups into a, hey, y'all, everybody can come do this. Come learn how. I, I, I haven't found the right string of words yet. Interesting. Well, that makes sense. You're, you're trying out different things and, and seeing what sticks. I mean, like yeah. perfectly understandable. Yep. Well, well, cool. And then, so it uh, sounds like there's all kinds of great stuff happening in that group from, you know, pe people making deals mm -hmm. and you ask me anything on Wednesday. And can you walk us through like this monthly challenge thing? Because I I've heard yeah. about it a couple of times and like, there was someone I, I heard about it from and I tried to join her group and it turns out it was a women only group. So I, as a man, I didn't <laughs> get to see what the challenge is all about. I so used to do that. Oh, darn. Well, at least you let me in now. So can you <laughs> kind of walk us through like sort of what this what this uh, monthly lead challenge is and like what do you what do you say to kick it off and like what kind of time frame and all that fun stuff I've done this lead challenge three I've successfully done it three months I've tried to do it probably 18 different times but successfully we've done it three different times the first time we did a 10 days to 10k challenge in the month of June and I decided that 10 days was too long we had to get in and get it done so we tried a seven day challenge in July and it was all Facebook leads so I had homework of things I wanted you to do, and then we had certain days in August where we made posts and got leads and, you know, celebrated with each other, and that helped people get some momentum to go out and do it again. And then in, 
I don't think we did anything really in August. But in September, we did a five-day owner financing challenge. So we were out trying to find houses in real life, offline. Uh, One day, we had an online challenge. But we were finding free and clear houses so that we could set up owner financing deals in your market. Because, like I said, sellers are going to be the same. They're going to have the same kinds of problems. And the houses are going to be in about the same kind of condition. And... It's, it's a lot easier to work with free and clear houses, especially if you're trying to set up some sort of creative financing deal. And that way, nobody checks your credit. You don't have to go to the bank and deal with a bunch of you know origination fees or loan officers or all this other stuff. You can keep it people to people. Okay. So you say this is the five-day owner financing challenge. And if someone sees that post, I mean, what what do they need to know exactly? Like what in that sort of uh, example, f- a five-day owner financing challenge, like what's the assignment? And is it like one assignment for all five days or different assignments on different days? Like how is that set up? It builds on each other. So the first day uh, or there's like a homework day and you, you know, I tell you what all we're going to be looking for and what you need to go find. It's kind of like a scavenger hunt. I need you to go find, you know, this kind of house and that kind of house. And then, you know, every day I give you a different place to go look either for houses, whether it's online or offline. Or, you know, one day I'll tell you, you know, how to start these conversations with these sellers. So that every day it makes a little bit more sense and you can see it working in your area just a little bit more. Or if you got to, you know, go all the way through Monday through Friday and then you got to do all five days on Saturday and Sunday when you get off work, that's fine too. A lot of the people that I help with real estate investing already have jobs or they already have things that they do that take up, you know, the majority of their time. And so they want to do something not part-time and not really as a side hustle, like as a, a thing that I'm doing that I'm not really promoting or talking a whole lot about, but that I'm going to be rich <laughs> when I'm ready to retire or so that, you know, I have something to actually give my kids besides a whole lot of my debt. Okay, so is what you're saying is that so this challenge captures people who are maybe looking at the real estate thing as maybe like a, like a hobby or a quick gamble where maybe they don't have the time budgeted to do this thing consistently, but they've always wanted to do a real estate deal. Maybe this is sure. the motivation. Yeah. They need it's to definitely. Take some action. I I don't attract the kind of people that want to quit their nine to five next month and you know wholesale. They don't want to hustle all the time. They want to slowly and steadily build up an extra 500 a month, an extra 1,000 a month, and then get to an extra 5,000 a month, and then get to an extra 10,000 a month. You know, the goal is to do an extra $10,000 a month by the end of, you know, next year. And you can do that with one deal a month. You don't have to go out and try to do 100 deals. Like I hear I hear a lot of real estate investors, and that's what they're teaching you. I'm going to teach you how to go from no deals to 52 deals in the first 30 days, and you're going to make seven figures. And there's a lot of stuff that's going to go on in between that. And I teach my people how to be lean and mean and consistently do one deal a month. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like the the big, huge promise. It, it sounds great at first, but then I, I start to get overwhelmed thinking of like how much time is gonna that's going to take, how much risk is there going to be. So your way makes a lot of sense. And so in doing these these challenges, these assignments, have you come across oh, any yeah. sort of resistance to people taking this action? Because I ima- imagine that especially if it's not part of a course, it's for free. I imagine that there's sort of that, that difficulty of, well, if you don't give them enough to do, then either they won't do it or they won't see a big result. But then it's like if you give them a bunch of cool stuff to do, then they'll quit before they even start. So, I mean, how did you... Uh, eventually crack the there's code with this definitely a balance to that, that but a lot of times by limiting you know i'm only going to be on for 10 minutes i cannot i mean i can motivate somebody to change their life in 10 minutes but even if i gave them you know the whole golden goose in 10 minutes there's going to be so many questions and so many different things that come up that beginning to end they're still going to need me and i i fully believe that and i know i'm like that too I need to be told the same thing probably three or four different times, three or four different days, and then practice it for three or four different days before it actually gets stuck in my head. And, you know, maybe you're just a smarter cookie than I am, and it only takes one 10-minute talk, and you can go out and make a million bucks. Well, good. Do it to it, buddy. 
Good. Then I they know. really need you because if one talk from you got them what they exactly. wanted, imagine about exactly. an ongoing and basis. All sorts of little things. I actually had one lady. Uh, she she talked to me about doing group coaching, and then she joined the group, and we were doing a free. I think it was in July when we were doing the seven day lead challenge, and she was like, "Oh my gosh!" She sent me a private message. She was like, "Why are you giving all of your secrets away for free?" And I was like, honey, this is just seven days of a Facebook challenge. This isn't all of my secrets. <laughs> this isn't even like touching the, you know, bottom of the iceberg of my secrets. <laughs> this is just seven cute little tips. <laughs> well, super awesome. So when you get to the, the end of those seven cute little tips, do you then transition into launch mode or do you then go into the hard sale or like what do you do once the challenge is over to make them realize that well they got some great results from you but it's not quite the end just yet i like to encourage people to send me a private message and get on a one-on-one -on -one call with me because a lot of times i find that people want to do the course but they really want more interaction with me They've got a lot of questions. They've got a lot of roadblocks in their head or they're getting it from their spouse or from their broker or from, you know, a, a memory when they were a child or, you know, there's something that we need to work on one on one. And they like the confidentiality of that being able to talk to me. They like being in the group atmosphere. And so, you know, a lot of it is I put a lot of trust and goodwill, I feel like, out into the world and people love me and trust me and give me goodwill back. Great. So you, you have the you have the group, you have the challenge. Once they get to the end, you encourage them to send you a message and then you get them on the phone call to clear up whatever sales objection they have. And what's that like? Is And is that like a, on the phone or is that like Skype video chat or like how long is that? Like what's sort of that one on one call like for you? It's it's definitely on the phone and it's 20 to 30 minutes. And I, by the time I get on the phone with somebody, they feel like they know me a lot because I am mouthy and I put my stories out there and they remember those stories or they heard me on a podcast or, you know, all these things, they really know me. So the purpose of the phone call is for me to get to know them and find out if my style, if my plan is going to work for them or if they have too many objections, if they've got too many problems, if they've got too much if their vibe is just all wrong, a lot of times I don't pitch people. I, I don't want to just take anybody and everybody that's got enough money. Interesting. You can go deal with my competition if you're going to be a pain in the neck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and, and and I understand that. So it's like that. The very the, even within the first few minutes, I imagine you can feel them out pretty well, right? And you can tell yep. like, are they going to yep. be too high maintenance or, or too many oh, yeah. questions? Or so, how do you know if? you have, uh, I guess, a good person you're talking to? Is it like if, there, if there's only one or two questions that are holding them back? Or like, how do you know if you have a dud versus that hot lead? I like to ask the questions and I like to find out where they are in life. A lot of times that'll tell me everything I need to know if they start talking about how, you know, everybody's busy. We all love to be busy. But there's a little bit of a pain in being busy because we all remember when we weren't so busy and that was back in the good old days, you know, and we want to get back to that. And we see people online and they see me online just kind of kicking it and hanging out and doing this and not running around like a crazy person. And they want that. Interesting. And I can, I can give them that. I can give them their time back. I can take, you know. I, I deal with a lot of agents. Agents love me because I speak both languages. And I know what it's like to be an agent and run around like a chicken with your head cut off. I know what it's like to be a small business owner and run around trying to, you know, put out fires all day long every day and leaving your phone on at night in case one pops up in the middle of the night. I know what that's like. So I also know what it's like to drink coffee on the porch and watch the birds on a Tuesday morning just because I can. Because I've set that up by the time I'm 32 so that I can do that forever. And people are looking at me like, well, dang, I'm 45 and I can't do that. I got this and that and the other. And, oh, I just wish I had that time. Well, I can give you your time back. It's only going to take one deal a month for the next year. Will you give me a year? Or do you want to keep going like you've been going for the last 15 years? Interesting. Well, cool. So, so it sounds like a pretty big factor in them working with you is that maybe they they don't aren't quite there yet, but they want to have what you have. And then if you can get to that to that point of saying, okay, well, you you want to have what I have. I, I've done it. I'll get you on that path. One deal a month seems like a pretty pretty much of a no brainer right there. Absolutely, absolutely.
And, you know, I see a lot of people that are teaching different things and, you know, they're saying, if you get five clients a month, you can make $10,000. Yeah, well, if you buy one house every single month, you will be a real estate investor, which to me is the top of the totem pole on the uh, monthly passive income, the residual income. It, I mean, renting houses is like the oldest monthly month uh, subscription program ever. Right. <laughs> and so you also, you don't learn a fad. You don't learn a trick. You learn real estate investing. You learn how to buy houses like people buy cars and clothes. Cool. And that, that sounds like more of like playing the long game and it seems way less risky because yeah. even if you're if you're buying up stuff and renting it out, uh, even if the whole marketplace still like goes to goes to crap, people still need a place to live. They still need to rent. So it seems pretty doable, both as far as like if people are on a time crunch in one way or another or too stressed out or they want something easier. It seems like a, a very like evergreen, dependable way of making money. Absolutely. And it's been around forever. And I don't care what they raise the minimum wage to. And I don't care if robots take over McDonald's because there's still going to be all these people out there needing somewhere to sleep at night, just like you said. Yeah. I, I mean, once robots take over, I'm going to need a robot to sweep the floor to, to clean up my house or something. Right. And I got to exactly. live somewhere for that. Exactly. And when, you know, we all start using Bitcoins, I'll just start collecting rent in Bitcoins. I'm not investing in Bitcoins. I'm buying houses. <laughs> Perfect. So, so you'll just kind of use the same principles, but then adapt to whatever it's, trends come and go with, with the time. Yeah. So, so great. So you, you mentioned uh, that you have we have this Facebook group and you mentioned that you have some of these different courses like the first deal done fast and stuff like that. So can you uh, let us know what sort of websites, what sort of courses do you want people to check out after listening to us talking today? I have a free cheat sheet. If anybody's interested in it, I, I call it a cheat sheet. It's not. It's probably like an ebook, but people don't use ebooks anymore. It's like 20 pages of how to get started investing in real estate without needing money, without needing banks, without having good, perfect credit. Everybody needs a real estate portfolio. And once you get past thinking it's really complicated and you see how easy it can be, you see why everybody should and could have a portfolio. So anyway, if you go, the cheat sheet is WhitneyNicely.com slash CS for cheat sheet. Super cool. WhitneyNicely.com slash CS, short for cheat sheet. And then when people go there and they get that, that free cheat sheet, will that give them everything else that they need to know? Like that'll get them on your list. That'll uh, tell them about your programs. That'll get them to the Facebook group, all that cool stuff. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So make sure that you go there right now if you're listening to this, which you are. So that's WhitneyNicely.com slash CS. That's W-H-I-T-N-E-Y-N-I-C-E-L-Y.com slash CS. WhitneyNicely.com slash CS. And so I hope that by listening today, you guys got some, some great takeaways about not only real estate, but also getting your stuff, stuff out there and uh, and adapting with the times. If you know Facebook Live's a hot thing, try out Facebook Live, add that to your thing. Uh, Facebook groups, uh, challenges, and telling a story and using the carousel to start one place and then go another and just being yourself, being authentic, being uh, unique in a world where everyone else tries to blend in or use the same color schemes or everyone else tries to play it safe. It sounds like a lot more fun to, uh, to you know, try different things out, test out different names to your Facebook group, different types of content and see what catches on and then have fun uh, building your business and build the list and do all that uh, sort of cool fun stuff and so as we're winding down today Whitney are you seeing just in all your your travels with your your students and all the real estate stuff happening do you see a number one universal mistake out there with these people trying to trying to make a difference trying to build their future any kind of like just mistake happening over and over again these days yeah a lot of people have this idea in their head that real estate investing is going to be easy like it is on TV and somebody's going to be there to do your hair and makeup every day and you're going to have somebody selecting a wardrobe for you and you're never going to get your nails messed up. And the first time that things start to go a little sideways in real life and you realize that TV is actually made for entertainment, a lot of people get nervous and they quit right there. They stop before it gets too difficult they stop before it gets too confusing they stop before they can see the money 
And I tell everybody I talk to, I'm always encouraging my students and my friends and just small business owners, keep going. It's not like it is on TV. And that's because, you know, life isn't like it is on TV, but it is amazing. And just on the other side of that little hiccup or that little bump in the road or whatever it is, is a whole new world and a whole new life. So keep going. Every time there's a little bit of trouble, plow through it and find out what's on the other side. Super great advice. Keep going, find out what's on the other side. And as you were explaining that, it reminded me of like, there's a, there's a, so, someone's like brother that I used to hang out with who I don't really hang out with anymore. But uh, whenever there would be a group of us and we'd be playing a board game like Monopoly or something, if he was losing, he'd be like, oh, I, I don't want to play this anymore or I want to start over. And then we'd sometimes start over the game for this person. And then once he was winning, it just didn't quite feel as good because it was like, well, you wouldn't be winning if we didn't start the game over three different times. And it seems like, well, that's that's fine in a board game situation. But if you, you keep cheating and you keep starting over, then it's not as fun when you're ahead. And in life, you don't really get that chance to start over. So so you already started the game. Why not finish it? And then once you get past whatever this rut or this rough patch or whatever temporary issue is holding you up, you get to the other end of that and you'll enjoy it a lot more than if you had just quit or started over something else and always wondered what could have been. So really great advice there to keep on going and see what's there on the other side. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Whitney. So everyone, make sure to go to WhitneyNicely.com slash CS. And I appreciate you stopping by and dispensing some of this knowledge. So uh, hope to hear from you.